thinking of how to get away. No one ever knew there was coal in the mountains till the man from the northeast arrived. He was waving them a hundred dollar bills, said, I'll pay you for your minerals. But he never left Harlan alive. Well, Granny, she sold out cheap, and they moved out west of Pineville to a farm where Big Rich Land River winds. Yeah, and I bet they danced in the jail. And they laughed and sang a new song. Hey, who said we'd never leave Harlan alive? So hello, everybody. Welcome to the Red Clay Music Foundry. Thank you so much for coming out this evening. Really appreciate you being here. Uh, it's, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you being here. We've uh, had a lot of nights where there was no music and then we were all, all dark and there was nobody in here and I would stand up here sometimes and just talk to myself, which I don't mind doing. I, I can do that pretty easily. But uh, anyway, I would much prefer to talk to you guys and have you here. So thank you so much for coming. And this is a good time to say hello to you folks watching on the EOP Live YouTube page and on uh, the Space Face Place for uh, Natalie and the Space Face Place for us. It's all out there. It's, it's all over the place. You just watch it wherever you're watching it. And I would like to remind you that there's a bar at the top that says tip jar. And it's not going to piss off a single person in this room if y'all just unload your pockets into that tip jar this evening and give profusely. And we will thank you in advance for your generosity, which I know you're going to exude tonight. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. And thanks for tuning in. And you can send a smoke signal to your friends and neighbors and family and tell them to tune in because it's a live stream. So what you're seeing is happening right now and what they will see will be happening right now. So that's cool. Um, and you folks in the house, the, the pregame show is, is archives of shows that we've done here and they're available on our EOP Live YouTube page and it doesn't cost anything, it's free. And there's seven or 8,000 songs there and they're, a lot of them are really good and some of them are really, really, really good. So. Uh, you could, if you work for an asshole, don't watch it at work because it's going to sort of encapture you and you won't be able to look away. So if you work for one of those people, don't do it at work. Wait till you get home. But if you work for yourself or you just stay, hang out at home, well, then watch it. You just turn it on all day long. And I guarantee you, you're going to like it. There's some really good stuff there. So um, without further ado, let me give you a little rundown of what's going on this evening. Uh, Natalie's going to play two sets. Uh, the first set will be... Uh, what she does, and then uh, there'll be a little break. It'll give you a chance to go to the bar and go to the merch table. She has records. She has jewelry. She has T-shirts. She has small children. She has all kind of things for sale out there. So uh, please, please, you know, Christmas is right around the corner. You're going to be looking for that stocking stuffer, and you're just going to need to fill that stocking up tonight. So go ahead and buy all that she has. She won't care. She's from California. She'll get some shipped over here to the East Coast, to the right coast, uh, when she, you know, runs out. So don't worry about it. Just buy all of it. It'll be great. Um, and I don't really know Natalie. And that's, uh, that's sort of a little bit unusual for me to, to have someone that we put on the stage that I don't know. But uh, I, I like a lot what I've heard so far and what I've read so far and what I see her interactions with other people so far. I think, uh, you know, w one of the pleasures for me in my side of the business is, is to be around nice people when I choose to. And if I don't want to be around somebody, I don't have to. I just don't book them. And, uh, and so it's a real pleasure for me to be able to say that, you know, I like somebody, not only their music and their art, but I just like them. 
And I feel that way about Natalie already, and I don't even know her. But I think you're going to feel the same way, and I know you're going to like her music. So uh, I think without further ado, what I'd ask you to do right now at this moment is sound like you're about a 1,000 people and give a nice welcome to Natalie Gelman. nobody was listening, it really wouldn't, wouldn't mean anything. So thanks for coming out and supporting live music. And um, yeah, we're intimate. So if you know me, if you know some of my songs and you're like, I desperately want to hear this, you can let me know. And also online, I'll be looking at my phone at some point in each set, taking a request from everyone online. But yeah, without talking too much before I get started, here's Heavy Heavy Heart. Lost my will 
guys. You're keeping that going. I like it. I, um, I did a really good deed today, and I just want to pat myself on the back. <laughs> uh, thank you. And I was thinking about it. Actually, when he was back there saying how I was a super nice person. Which is not... It's not something you get called a lot when you're from New York City. It's not like what naturally works. <laughs> New Yorker is super nice. Um, but I was picking up a car at Greenville Airport and I was driving out and this mother or grandmother and her 10 year old or so was like walking down the road with all their suitcases and stuff and I saw two cars pass them and I passed them and I like slowed down like 10 or 15 feet in front of them and I was like, where are you guys? Do you, do you need a ride? And they walked up and they're like, um, yes. <laughs> and so... I was like, well, where are you going? And they said, economy lot. <laughs> and it's actually incredibly far from the airport, and it's incredibly hot and humid. <laughs> and I gave them a ride. But what was weird is we're at an airport, you know, with this rental car, and there's nothing in the car except me and my purse. And I was like, they probably were like, what is going on here? Like, why does this woman <laughs> nothing in the car? Um, but yeah, that was, that was my good deed. And what was cool is I, was, I dropped them off. We found this car they rented from Toro, which I rented my Mustang in the music video for that last, car, that last song from Toro. And um, after I dropped them off and I was headed back over to my friend's house to load up and get over here, I was thinking, that felt so good. And we haven't gotten to do things like that for someone else. Like, I never told them my name. I never, like... They're never gonna know who I am or anything like that. It's just like, hey, you guys needed that and I could help you. And I like, I don't know. We don't get to do stuff like that when we're all stuck at home. So here's to better days and getting more chances to be a good Samaritan and give someone a ride even if they're from Florida. Underneath the current I will be an anchor I will plant my feet down Weather the storm Underneath my weakness I keep growing stronger I've been seeking high ground Since I was born
guys. Do you like singing? Always. Yeah? Yeah, I was thinking a lot about that whole 15 minutes or so of my day for like hours afterwards. The last time I picked up a hitchhiker, last time I picked up a hitchhiker, I was in Northern California, um, in Big Bear Country, and have you guys picked up hitchhikers before? It's been a while. I know. I was like, this. They either think I'm gonna kill them, like with nothing in my car that is brand new <laughs> from the rental car company. I'm like, it's so clean. <laughs> um, <laughs> but when I picked up somebody, it was in Northern California on um, like Big Bear Country, coming out of Arcadia, Eureka, something like that, driving into Redwood City. If that sounds correct. Y'all don't know California. I'll just pretend that's right. Um, anyways, I had stayed. I was I was looking for a hotel out there, and I couldn't find one. And I was just gonna drive inland to the five and like find a hotel that was cheaper and not $300 a night on the road. And um, this girl at my show was like, hey, what you doing, where are you staying? I was like, oh, I'm going all the way inland after this. And she's like, stay with me. And I did, <laughs> just like a totally random person. And I felt really beholden to this like shared community thing after that. She was super nice. Um, we've been friends now for a while, but um, I asked her about all the hitchhikers I was seeing as I was driving through the Redwood forest coming down from Oregon. And she was like, yeah, it's just normal up here. Like everyone gives each other a ride if they can. And I was like, yeah, we don't do that <laughs> down in LA and Ventura. And so I, um, I said, well, if I can pick someone up, I'll, I'll do that. And next day I'm headed towards the five from the coast and I see like some dude with like, who hasn't taken a shower in weeks. And I was like, not you. <laughs> And then I see some girl with like two pit bulls and I was like, I'm not that good of a person, not you. And I'm driving and I'm like pretty far into the forest and some girl is like just standing in this pullout with a bikini on and a life jacket. And I was like, what is your deal? So I like pulled over and rolled back and she's like already getting in my car. I'm like, hold up this is my first time and you're not allowed to kill me. <laughs> There's no cell service here. There's like, so she tells me she, uh, she was from Bend, Oregon, where I'd just been, and she was uh, river rafting or whatnot. And that was her story. And I just gave her a ride like eight or 10 miles up the river. And I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I was, I was, the whole time I was like, she could be hiding like a machete in her life jacket. <laughs> like, I don't know. And I, my car was just a total touring car by this point. I'd been on the road for like two months. So she couldn't even put her feet down in my front seat. She was like sitting all like with her legs up by her chest. I was just like, sorry, I'm on the road. I'm a musician. Um, but yeah, it's these, it's these ways we can help each other. And I think this year has been a really big reminder of um, looking for the little things that make life good. And that's what this song's about, this next one. This is called Some People. And I'd love it if you sang with me. The chorus is, some people are so poor, all they have is money. you had a room gets the perfect light in June put a smile on your face fills your eyes with grace your perfect little room by the way I asked that girl in her bikini how long she'd been standing there for a ride and there were other people on this road she told me she'd been standing there for half an hour I don't know what to think about that. I feel like if there's a girl standing in a bikini anywhere, she shouldn't have to wait for something for more than five minutes. But maybe, 
Maybe she did just have a machete in her life jacket and she just chose not to kill me. And maybe that's his, maybe up there there's this like serial killing, bikini wearing, serial killing chick. All right, I'm gonna keep going, sorry. Remember this when times go back when nothing was more than what you had You found ways to get by Watching clouds pass in the sky Remember this when times go bad When you want more Some people are so poor. I'm laughing about this bikini killing bandit serial killer. Some people are so poor. That's a song waiting to be written. Some people are so poor. Sing it if you know. All they have is money. Remember this when times go. Nothing was more than what you had You found ways to get by Watching clouds pass in the sky Remember this when times go by When you want more and more and more of things Sometimes more is less it seems Some people People are so poor. Some people are so poor. Some people are so poor. All they have is money, money, money. Some people are so So this is interesting because I can't quite see you guys. And a lot of you know that being from New York, I'm not afraid to call you out if I see you and you're not singing. But I can't quite see past like the third or fourth row. That and the fact that I started wearing glasses during COVID and I'm super blind now. But I can definitely hear you or not hear you. So, feel free to sing along so I don't have to just make rash judgments and be like you over there in the blue or maybe it's white or maybe it's just gray, I can't really see it. Is there someone in front of you or is that your jacket? <laughs> just sing along. And the other rule is that if you don't sing, then it's about you maybe you want it to be. I don't know. You're like, no, I just really want some more money. I don't really care about all the little shit. I just really want a lot of freaking money. That's okay. As long as you are honest with yourself, you can look yourself in the mirror and pay for whatever plastic surgery you need for the frown and the wrinkles that frown is giving you. All right. This tangent's gone on long enough. You guys ready? People are so poor. Blue or white?
quiet or whatever it is. And people are all so close. Some people are all so poor. All they have is money, money, money. Some people are all so poor. Some people are all so some people are so poor. All they have is money. Hey. I knew they were singing because she looked into his eyes. It was very intimate. Um, I got a story about that too, but I, ooh, sorry about that. I won't get to that just yet. I'm gonna play you guys. Um, in October, I was kind of done with, with quarantine and all of this. And um, last year was such a weird one, right? Kind of goes without saying. But I did write a lot of songs and I did start picking up some new um, instruments and some new tunings. And I got this new record, but Ooh. I wanna play you some of these even newer songs. I think I'm gonna play you guys the 2020 song. Yeah. yeah. I wrote this, um, you guys know Missy Elliott? I wrote this one night, I was trying to finally learn, is it worth it? Let me work it, put my thing down, flipping and reverse it. Tis your femindipotin yet, and yep. Tis your femindipotin yet, and yep. If you got a big bat, let me search up. Find out how hard I gotta work. Yeah. Just, yeah. Anyways, I was like going through all these rap songs and I was like, what has like philosophical, beautiful lyrics that would really like be nice in a folk song? Like, is it worth it? Let me work it. Um, anyways, the number one rap song at the moment was Rack City. Are y'all familiar with Rack City? Someone is. Well, if you're not, let me just corrupt you. It's beautiful lyrics are rack city bitch, rack rack city bitch, 10, 10, 10, 20s on your titties bitch, rack city bitch, rack city. So from that inspiration of rap, I'm sure there was wine involved, I'll be honest. There, was, there had to be alcohol. But I started writing um, as close to a little rappy little song as I'll probably ever write. Uh, about everything we were going through, so. This is 2020. This year I was gonna get my shit together Now I'm trying to stay alive, hoping 21 is better I haven't eaten up my friends Is this how the world ends? Y'all walking around with your masks on your chin But I promise that you ain't saving lives with your grins Tell me how to get so dumb Survival of the fittest now, here we come Oh, 2020, is there any, any way we'll be all done? By 2021, I hope you're not now 2020, I've had plenty, plenty Last me through 2022, oh, oh, oh. Patiently, I've been staying at home It's a blessing and a curse that I'm not alone But there's only so many times You can rearrange and redesign For you sit back, watch the craziness roll Line up the lies like dominoes If you just could get back to Some decency and truth Thank you, Georgia 2020, is there any, any way we'll be all done? By 2021, I hope you're not now. 2020, I've had plenty, plenty to last me through. 2022, oh, oh, said I want to go on a cleanse. Stop drinking my way through, but I just keep waiting. I want to start working out Stop eating my way through But I'll just keep waiting Waiting, waiting to get through 2020 Is there any, any way I'll be all done? By 2021 I hope you're not now 2020 I've had plenty Twenty-two. Oh, oh, oh. 
year I was gonna get my shit together And I'm trying to stay alive Hoping 21 is better Thank you. Seriously, Georgia. That all happened. I was like, I will be touring more in the Peach State. Um, so I wrote a lot last year, and I was writing a lot in alternate tunings. Anyone play guitar here? Yeah. I started learning some songs in alternate tunings, and um, pretty soon was writing in them because they're gorgeous. And it was a weird thing this whole this whole past year. I found myself. I live on a farm um, in California, and for some reason, even though we live on land, I found myself kind of stuck at home. And I was like, hmm. What should I, should I leave my house? Can I leave? Is it safe? And I was writing these really philosophical songs, just kind of thinking about, you know, I think we all kind of did some soul searching, and this is the first one that I wrote last year in uh, late March or early April. It's called, What Else Can You Do? some reason my eyes are tearing okay
Thank you, Ryan. I'll play another dad gad song in a minute or two. Um. I told the folks watching online that they could choose, choose a song. And I was like, oh, how am I going to do this? So here's what I'm throwing out to you guys watching on Facebook. And these guys kind of get a vote, too. So if they're like, really leaning on one thing or the other. Would you guys rather, um, let me know in the comments if you'd rather hear, after this next song, if you'd rather hear Creep by Radiohead, or if you'd rather hear um, Big Yellow Taxi by Joni Mitchell. There's some options. Um, this is a song, I wrote this one um, a long time ago with a friend out of Texas and um, released it last year in 2019. My birthday's in a couple, couple weeks and I'm turning the same age I turned two years ago now, so. <laughs> we just don't count last year and then some. The wrinkles I got during COVID don't know that, but anyways, such is life. Um, but I wrote this song a long, long time ago with a friend of mine and released it in 2019, thanks to my Patreon. And it's a song I wrote for my mom. And the last song I played you, it's really about just uh, a lot of the, I think our relationships with our, with our parents are often some of the hardest, only second to our relationship with ourselves. But I, I had a really difficult relationship with my mom, and it actually kind of got easier as she started getting Alzheimer's. Um, it was like the, the hardness and the shell and the, uh, the way she, she had a hard life, and I was her youngest, and she was an older mom, and she was kind of over it, I think, by the time I came along. And um, yeah, so we, we kind of made our amends as she got sick, and this song, it's called The Lights Upstairs, I wrote with a friend, and she had gone through Alzheimer's with her grandmother, and she's from Texas, and just y'all in the South and people in Texas, you have just a very good way of looking at things. <laughs> and so she brought a lot of lightness and kindness, and um, I just kind of, I have her to thank, her name's Jessica Lee Graves, I have her to thank for um, reminding me to keep finding the silver lining that even though my mom was forgetting things and, and losing her memories, I could still hold them in my heart and I could still make new ones for us. And uh, so here it is. This is The Lights Upstairs. I found the earth next to the ice cream I found the cheese next to the bread The crackers getting warm. Things are getting scrambled in your head. But darling, nobody cares if the lights are on upstairs. If the words don't come so easy after a while. Call me another name. It don't cause me any pain. This is how it goes. Your mind is not on trial. You can lose all of the melodies you sang to me in time, but the 
what they're saying on the interwebs if I can figure this out um or I know there's a lot of help going on back there if you guys see a one that's coming up a lot let me know oh it is okay I got, um, I got one other, I told you I have this song about a relationship with yourself. I got two more for you before we take a quick little break. And um, yeah, I think it's an interesting time. I thought, I thought I liked spending time with myself, but maybe not for 16 months. That, that's a challenge. But this is, a, this is something I wrote, kind of just looking back at like, well, what? What's all going on around here? It's called It's Not You. We're still out of tune, hold on. So, while I have this time, I'll tell you guys, I do, um, I do have the new CD with me. And uh, there's 13 songs on there. Woo! Yes. It is, you know, all the, 
music that didn't come out last year, it is just full of, full of songs. And there's also um, jewelry made from my very own guitar strings. I almost didn't have any guitar strings to play with tonight. <laughs> not t-shirts, unlike what Eddie said. <laughs> Those are still in the works. But I, uh, I am selling small children. <laughs> and I am also selling CD players, if you don't have one, for the CDs. Ready to sing along? Charge all the people, a dollar and a half just to see. 
here. I can't even hear if you're singing along or not. But I hear you laughing, so I don't think you're singing. Hey, farmer, farmer, put away the day, day, day now. Give me the spots on my apples, leave the bells and the bees. Please don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got till it's gone. Get that ass, put up a parking lot. Ooh, ba, 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 ba. Ooh, ba, 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 ba. Late last night, I heard the scream door slam. In a big yellow taxi, took away my own man. Don't it always seem to go that you don't We're gonna take a short break, and I've got so many more instruments to play for you. Yeah. So stick around, say hello, and I'll see you in a few.
I was talking to a few of you on the break. It seems like we should play this song. I um, grew up busking in New York City, and it's one of my favorite favorite ways to share music, actually, because you kind of reach people that might not come out to a show like this, might not have the money to come to a show like this, or the time, or whatnot. And um, so I, I would busk in the subways, and all kinds of people came across me, and um, have been on my email list for years, and sometimes when I'm touring, I'll be like in Bismarck, North Dakota, and someone will be like, I joined your email list 12 years ago. <laughs> be like, wow. And then they'll say, I drove three hours to come see you, and I'm like, wow. All right, I mean, I guess it's fair, like I'm here in North Dakota. <laughs> Who knows when I'll be back here? But I, uh, I love busking, and I was at Sundance one of my first years there, and I had a couple little performances. I was at the film festival, and I was playing different lounges as showcasing for different filmmakers and trying to get my music placed in their films. And you only get to play for like 15 to 30 minutes a day at these different things. And I was like, well, that doesn't work for me. I have a lot I want to say. So I started busking out in the streets, and... Um, it was like 16 degrees, but I was standing in the sun, so. <laughs> and um, this guy happened to be walking by one day, and he joined my email list, and then we got married. <laughs> just like that. It was just like that. No, he joined my email list, and, and we talked briefly, and he gave me his film that he was there at Sundance with, and I was like, okay, cool, here's my record. He claims he paid for my record, but I have the microphone, and I say we traded. I don't know. I don't really know what happened. But I did write a song about it, so I also get points for that. I win. I win, I win, I win. Um, and this is a sing-along, and I'm, I'm putting this out to you two. Is it blue or white? It's blue. This is like that dress that was like a big deal a couple years ago. Like, is it blue or is it brown? Well, this is for you. And is she in pink? Orange and that's pink to me from as far as my blind eyes can see. Well, my high school choir teacher told us, and this is the New York City public school system for you. He said, singing together is the second most intimate thing you can do with somebody. And so, this is really intimate, and I hope you sing to each other and look each other in the eyes. And I'll teach you the part when we get there. Here we go, this is Sundance in your eyes. Come 
down the octave. I don't know, maybe there's some bass baritones out there. We'll be like, oh, 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 oh. yeah, go for it. Oh, 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 oh. It sounds like you're thinking. Oh, oh. lucky in a while, you better be singing. I didn't hear you guys just then. I know I can't see you, but I can hear you. Take comfort in the fact that I can't see you. If you suck, I still won't know who it is that sucks. All right, we're gonna do this again. My mom always wanted me to be a teacher. All the time I would hear, so you get benefits, Natalie. You get dental, you get vision, and you get summers off. But I have so much power behind this microphone, just like a teacher in front of a bunch of students. I don't know. I just want you to sing, because it's all get pregnant, just name it Natalie or Nathaniel or... for one of those filmmakers that I met. And as it goes in the entertainment industry, which y'all know something about now here in Atlanta. You got all of Hollywood's just moving in and got all these actors. Anyways, I'm married to an actor, so I get it. Um, so I wrote this song and it was for this film. It was for the end credits of this film. And as it goes in the entertainment industry, by the time the film got made and done, there was like a new director or something. And I sent her the song and she got back to me and she said, that sounds really good, but I thought you were gonna write a gospel song. And I said, I don't write gospel songs. And she said, well, could you? And I say yes to a lot of things I have no business doing. <laughs> but for some reason I was like, nope, I'm not gonna do that. You should find someone who writes gospel music. And I realized after a while that the song really wasn't for the film at all, but it was for me. I um, had been signed to a production deal with these really big producers, and they had signed Imagine Dragons and The Killers and Natalie Gelman. And so I thought, third time's the charm. One of these bands is going to hit. Third time was not the charm. And 
somewhere in there, I was like 25 years old and I thought I had it all figured out. And I realized pretty quickly that I did not have it all figured out. And in between realizing that I knew nothing and then realizing how good it is that I knew nothing and I'd always be learning, I wrote this song. Life made me some promises it never meant to keep. Set me up to break me down in places where I'm weak. Held me up against each day. Hope on the soles of my feet. But life made me some promises it never meant to keep love took my heart before and wandered off to find something prettier and lovelier than what it left behind darken things up now. I, uh, I love some of the comments. That's when, when you release an album, it's interesting because it's no longer yours. It's like, okay, here's this baby that I had, and this one took seven years to gestate. I don't know. I, I played the release show in Ojai, and I was like, is there a doula in the audience? <laughs> My town has, like, a doula every other, you know. There were no doulas. This one was uh, seven years in the making, and um, someone was saying, like, wow, for someone who's happily married, she sure writes a lot of sad songs. I get it all out. It's like therapy. And then I share it all so y'all can get it all out, too. Um, this one was kind of just for fun, this next one. I was inspired by something I read in a book, and I wish I knew which book it was now, but it said, tall tales, loose lies, love songs, and alibis. And I thought, well, that sums up all of my music. <laughs> like, there's definitely love songs. 
And then there's these like embellishments of the truth and what really happened. It's like the way it felt versus what actually happened. And um, yeah, I was like, this would make a great album title. So I need to write the song. And I, I wrote this next one. It's called The Way Things Go. And it's kind of how I feel about LA and the music industry. And it almost didn't make the record. We were recording, we, we were recording mostly live and uh, over about three and a half days. And so the full band was together for three days and this was the last song we recorded. And uh, yeah, it's, it's one of my favorites. I'm glad it's on the record. Here it is. Sitting tight on the edge of my tongue Selling and ready to burn you like a shackle the truth needs an angel or the devil is muse and we've already lost the next nothing to lose tall tales loose lies love songs alibis another day in paradise you keep your eyes closed tall tales loose lies love songs alibis all just seems to be the way things go Ohio this one time in a crystal shop. <laughs> I was wow. looking for um, wind chimes for Brent. And someone behind me goes, hey, where do I know you from? And I turn around, I'm like, hi, I don't think we know each other. And uh, he goes, no, I definitely know you. And I was like, I, I don't know. Um, I'm a musician. I play a lot in town. He goes, I'm not hitting on you. I'm like, um, okay, well, I think I said something like, I'm buying wind chimes for my husband because <laughs> I'm not hitting on you. I'm like, I, I'm a musician. I play in town. He's like, ah, that's not it. I'm like, well, I don't know. He's like, yeah, you look so familiar. And I get this a lot. A lot of people come up to me and they're like, you look like my niece, my granddaughter, my cousin, my best friend, my worst enemy, whatever it is. And I just, I just looked at him. I was like, well, I've got a very generic face. I look like a lot of people, and he goes, no, you're Elfin. <laughs> and so, five seconds later I'm on Facebook, I'm like, yo, people in Ojai be calling me Elfin? <laughs> what does this mean? I'm like, I think I, think I should have 
shouldn't be offended, but I, I don't know. And so then a lot of people on the internet know a lot more than I do, as I'm sure you've experienced too. And so, someone's, someone on Facebook's like, you are so elfin. And then they explain to me that there's these fairies and there's the seely and unseely fairies. And they said, when you sing Sundance in your eyes, you're the seely fairy. And when you sing the lion, you're the unseely fairy. And so what it is, is these, there's this folklore, I think it's Irish folklore, that um, the fairies are always kind of messing with our lives and making us stop and pick up people from Florida and wonder if they're vaccinated. And <laughs> And then, you know, just go, all right, let's blast this AC. No, but there's always these unseely and seely fairies around us. And um, the seely ones are messing with our lives, but it's in a way to be playful and it's to encourage us to go forth and, and experience joy and silliness and laughter. And the unseely ones are like dark and they're like, yeah, I'm gonna just, you're gonna have the decaf coffee today, bitch. <laughs> I should have asked if there were kids in the audience, but I've just decided that I'm cursing tonight, so hopefully that's okay with everyone. Um, so, on that note, here's another unseely song. You woke up the line, now the cat is on the prowl. But one more is too many See one is where it's at You shouldn't give kisses Where you can't give love Baby, you woke up the line Now you best be running fast Her claws could tear the bed sheets up Just inches from your skin So careful not to go too far Murder is a sin Her lips can leave So I, um, on this new record, it's the first time I've actually written songs on the piano on this new one. And I grew up playing piano and violin, and it was a very traumatic experience for me. 
My dad went to Juilliard for undergrad and grad on full scholarship for violin. And when I was like four years old, I had to start studying violin with his friends, who were all also militant Russian musicians. And my piano teacher's name was Miss Sharp, which is what all the black keys are right here. And she and I did not get along. But somehow, a couple years ago, I started playing, I started playing piano again. I was writing with um, Charlie Midnight, who wrote a lot of the record with me. And we were writing this one song on the guitar, and I was like, hold on, I'm just not, I don't know. I don't know if we should finish this one on the guitar. It's not sounding good. And I sat down, he has a grand piano in his living room, and I sat down at the piano, and I was like, it's a piano song. <laughs> so there's a couple piano songs now, and I've written more for future records. And I'm going to throw it out to YouTube. You guys can let me know on YouTube, and you can let me know here if you want to hear The Reckoning or No Heartache Day. But right now, this is stronger. When you don't know what it is that you're running from, you run faster than your legs can carry you. Suddenly, the thing you feel becomes the thing that just might pull you through.
Thank you. Thanks, you guys. You're wonderful. All right, let's see. Or maybe you guys want to let me know. Corey or Shalom? Oh, it's by a hair. All right, we'll give him another song. Maybe Facebook. You can see what Facebook wants to do. Um, this is Unloving You. And this is, um, this is one I wrote. I used to not share what this song was about. And it's really better to like, I think, it, well, how, I wonder what the expression is in the South, like you keep your secrets to yourself. Like what's a good expression for that? <laughs> Anyone? There's gotta be something you guys say that's really like clever and, um, Well, that, that and Roll Tide will get you very far in the South, I've learned. Um, but no, there's got to be something like, I don't know. Anyways, I, I wrote this about someone I was working with. And um, it's just an, it's an interesting thing when you, when you go from, you know, I'm sure you guys feel this way too, even with, with your jobs. I don't know what y'all do. <laughs> but... It's a hard thing. It's it's uh, you know they say like you have your your work spouse and whatnot, and so it's a weird it's a weird relationship. And they kind of started ghosting me, and I wrote I wrote this. Here it is. left to unbreak 
thought you knew me I thought you wanted What I still do Thank you. Thanks, guys. Corey, what's it looking like? I love it. Oh, I started getting all these ideas. I have so many songs, you guys. I could truly play here all night for you, but then Eddie might not bring me back. So I'm just going to play a couple more. Um, this, is a, this is one I wrote. I was trying to write a song for Tiny Desk. I didn't get it, but I, I do this a lot. I write a lot of songs for Tiny Desk, and then they end up becoming like very favorite songs of mine, these songs I write under pressure. And this is one of them. This is, um, this is actually another song I wrote for my mom. And um, when, I, when I found out she passed, I felt I was driving down the road a couple days later, and I felt like these cables were cut from my back as I was driving down the freeway, and I felt free. And um, you know, I think even if we have difficult relationships with our, with our people, sometimes we can still feel beholden to part of, you know, carrying on that legacy and, and not fully being ourselves until that space is there. And, uh, yeah, that's that freedom and, um, and her always telling me that I should go be a teacher <laughs> is where this one came from.
I love this train going by right at the end. So There's even a train here at Eddie Owen Presents Red Clay. They follow me around the country, you guys. Um, so, I wrote a song on a like I was saying earlier, I started experimenting during, during COVID. First it was alternate tunings, and then I started picking up these instruments that I've just gathered over the years that I have in my house. I have like uh, a cojita, I think it's called. It's from Mexico. I have a harp guitar. I have all kinds of things I don't actually play. <laughs> I have a mandolin, all kinds of drums. One of the things I have is, um, a kalimba. This is not my kalimba. My friend let me borrow it. Um, but I've had my kalimba since I was about four or five years old. I got it at a yard sale. And I've carried it around with me for some reason. And finally, in the fall last year, I decided to tune it thanks to the people on the internet who know more than me on YouTube. And so I tuned mine. And then in January, I told my Patreon backers that I would write a song on the kalimba, and then I was beholden to doing that, so I finally did, and um, this, is, this is what it is. It's called Anything But You. <clears throat> Can I take back what I never said? If I only thought the words inside my head Does it count? One, two, three, four, five, six Tell me how it is I'll come to this Never can tell what's really going on You just always assume that you know someone Till it's too late to say what you really should That might heal the hurt do some good, little by little, and bit by bit, I'll get by and get over it. Do as I say and not as I do, might just be what it comes down to. Trying to be anything but you Every time you try to find my way Gotta learn to bend So you don't break It's like two steps forward And two steps back But you never lost anything You never had You were in there when I needed you now I find some truth when I feel your ghost like a break in time A moment when I have answers to I forget again Little by little and bit by bit I'll get by and get over it Do as I say not as I do it might just be what it comes down to try to be anything but you oh take your chances fight real hard do It 
comes down to trying to be anything but you. You guys thought you'd pick up an instrument during COVID. That is your instrument. It's really, um, everything on it sounds really pretty. It's a very sealy, <laughs> very sealy instrument. Um, all right. I'm a little bit out of tune up here. This is, um, I don't know if you guys follow me on Facebook, but if you do, you, you, should, you might have seen when I announced this run of tour dates, there was like half a dozen comments that said, what do you got to do to get you to come to Seattle? <laughs> and I don't know, I got to get up to Seattle. And I wrote this next song in, um, in Seattle. Started writing it up there. There's, um, there's a lot of traffic in Seattle. And you think Atlanta traffic is bad, but I've never parked on a road here in Atlanta. Maybe you have, but I never have. But I parked in what's called the Mercer Mess. And I started writing Photograph here. This is um, probably my favorite song on the record, and it's actually a song I wrote for all of you. Mm. Yeah. I know you ain't, has anyone here had a, had a song written about them before? I know you have. And I wrote a song about you. But anyone here have a song written about them? Well, now you do. This one. This is called Photograph. This is, the, um, this is where the title of the record comes from, Moth to the Flame.
Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, being my official ticketed Atlanta debut. I played a lot in Atlanta, but special big hugs to Eddie Owen. And I got um, one more song for you. Don't get excited back there. But I do want to thank you. I, they were opening the door like, you done yet? <laughs> I'm not done yet, unless you pull the plug on me. Um, Thank you so much. Shalom in the back doing a sound. Yes, sounds great. And he's a sweetheart. And Corey's back there making it look good for everyone on Facebook. And Will, back there, I know you guys don't care about Facebook, I guess. Well, he's also doing the lights so that I can't see you. Yeah. Yeah. And then Will was back there helping getting you all in here. And Mary's back there serving you the drink. And I'm up here slinging songs. And we got Eddie again. Give it up for Eddie. Woo! And this is another sing along. We're just going to close it out with this one. This is a. Like a fool, I went and stay too long. Now I'm back. Thank you again to Eddie and everyone back behind the scenes. Appreciate you guys. Have a good rest of your weekend and happy 21.